Uh, welcome to the 213th event of the Chennai International Center. On behalf of the board and trustees of the CIC, it's my pleasure to welcome you this evening. Uh, this evening, we have a speaker, Mr. R. Venkat, who is going to be taking us through the history of Chennai in the 1940s. Uh, a lot of trivia around the history and what happened in the city at that point in time. But before I invite him, uh, a little bit about CIC. It's an organization dedicated to creating a dynamic platform for thought leadership, dialogue and cultural exchange. Our mission is to bring together leaders, innovators and influencers across diverse fields, which is business, academia, public policy and arts, to engage in a meaningful uh, dialogue to inspire learning and to promote a, a sense of positive change in the city. CIC continues to play a very integral role in fostering intellectual growth and building a vibrant community here in Chennai. And as I said, this is the 213th event. We have had events across a diverse set of subjects, uh, from history to business to entrepreneurship to arts to culture and so on, including sports. We have had some stellar sports persons also speak at the CIC. Now about the speaker for this evening, Mr. R. Venkatesh is a Chennai-based historian, novelist and heritage enthusiast. He has written three Tamil historical novels, including Kaveri Manidan, which is a sequel to Kalki's magnum opus, Pony in Selvan. His novel in English was published by Hackett by the name Gods, Kings and Slaves, was about the Kilji invasion of the South, particularly that of Madurai. Over the last five years, Mr. Venkatesh has been organizing groups of local history enthusiasts to map the city's history by crowdsourcing. The most famous project of that is the Kuwa ma cultural mapping where they have successfully marked nearly 400 historical spots of historical, architectural, social, and religious relevance over a period of two years along the banks of the river Kuwa. Venkatesh leads heritage walks, gives lectures, and organizes tours for heritage enthusiasts. He has written over 300 articles on Madras, mostly in DT Next. He is also working on a book on the history of the city. Over to Mr. Venkatesh. Uh, good evening. So we are in the tail end of this uh, Madras month. What started as Madras day became a Madras week and then it became a Madras month. But I personally think there's an overload. We should be spreading it throughout the year. So Madras is a fascinating uh, city. If you delve deeply into it, you have layers. The layers are what is interesting. I'm going to talk about one layer today. I was asked to talk about something interesting about Madras and Today I am going to talk about one decade, which I consider the most interesting and the most proactive in the history of Madras, the 1940s. The 1940s is a very important decade throughout the world. The world war was going on, the independence movements in several countries were going on, worldwide scarcities were happening. So, in a way, most of our present day history was being redefined in the 1940s. So, you will see history repeating itself in many places and I will remind you, the first one. The Madras you don't know, of course, you will be knowing a lot of these things. We have been drilling it into you for years at a stretch. And so, the next one. Some decades have the dullest assortment of the events. They are swept into the backyard of your forgetfulness or your memories. Some are not. There are years when the newspaper habitually keeps sending out the errand boys to buy extra blacking to print those bold headlines. So, 1940s was a decade of headlines and more importantly, there was a huge censorship going on in India. The government was not allowing a lot of things to be printed. Some people like Indian Express even stopped publishing the paper rather than go along with the British. The 40s was one ink guzzling decade. That is the important thing about it. Next one. If there was a time in Madras where everything was different from what it is today, it is the 1940s. I am contradicting myself because I am saying history repeats itself. You can see a lot of events in 1940s getting repeated in recent history. The world war was looming. 1940 to 43, the Axis forces were about to win. Japanese had taken almost entire East Asia. The Germans were threatening Britain. France had fallen. And so many things were happening. A lot of it was not known at that point of time. When the Japanese conquered Singapore, which was the headquarters for them, for the allied headquarters in Asia, they were looking for another safe place. The next safe place they, they chose was not Madras, was Avadi. 
Avadi was the biggest allied base in the entire world. We had something like 30,000 soldiers staying there. Even today you can see the railway track taking a bend before Patabiram. So that was because it was not supposed to go into Avadi. It had its own theatres, it had its own airfields, its swimming pools, permanent people and those who went home were sworn to secrecy. You shouldn't talk about this. But the Japanese knew very well about Avadi. The Madras people don't know about Avadi but the Japanese knew about Avadi. So that is why Madras was always a legal target, a legitimate target to bomb. You are a military city. So that is what the local people did not know. The next one. Uh, the Air Raid Patrol, the, that is an organization which was trying to help the local people uh, survive the war. Madras now in the war area. Recruits are wanted. This is an advertisement. We were totally into the war and people knew it also. The stage light can go off. What happens in war? Many of us have not been throughout, uh, throughout our lives we have not been to a deep uh, war. First thing that happens is scarcities. Your uh, supply chains get cut off, your mining stops, then production of agriculture stops and uh, the product takes a, it, it takes a lot more effort to reach it to the end user. So the first scarcity, rice. Burma was the biggest supplier of rice to Madras and we were a rice eating state. And Burma gets cut off because the Japanese have taken over Burma. Rice stops coming. So rice is being rationed. And how does the country react? How does the city react? Next one. It is facing an Idli famine. Idli was banned in the Cochin state. Because Idli took up too much of rice and other ingredients. Even today, it is not easy to make an Idli from start to finish at home. It is easier to buy the batter from the shop. Or it is easier that way. That attempts to simplify. Well, before the grinder came in, I think Idli was in the Idli was a part of this uh, resource guzzling kitchen, and uh, in the last minute intervention, Idli was not banned in the Madras presidency. So the target of the government was first we ban the Idlis. Next one, this is an advertisement which came in all papers advertising for wheat. How you can make Godamai dosa in your house? Both Godamai dosa and Rava Idli were invented in the 1940s. The Godamai Dosa was invented in the Madras and the Rava Idli in Mysore. This was the answer of the public to the restrictions placed on rice. A rice eating public were forced to, they were not ready to take it over immediately. See, a uh, lady is supposed to make uh, wheat dosas and government advertises that. Next one. Free cooking demonstrations for women in Madras city. So, uh, we have in Rayapuram, we have in Washerman Pet, we have in Muthayal Pet, we have in Georgetown, Parktown, Perambur. If you observe this, it is all North Madras. The population lives there. We are not talking about South Madras at all. And at every street corner, they are trying to do wheat dishes and tell people how to survive the war. This is a very interesting thing which history repeating itself during the COVID times. This is P.T. Rajan who is the grandfather of the, I think the, the, com the computer affairs minister or something, uh, IT minister. So he says, I am celebrating the marriages of my daughter and my niece. Please don't come for the wedding. They look at the last line. I am not in a position to invite initial invitations to relations and friends for the function. Such relations and friends as would like to convey their blessings to the bridal couple may do so by post. It is better you send a telegram or send a post. You don't come to the wedding. Because less than 30 invitations could be given legally. 30 invitations that the families are so big that 30 invitations would uh, suffice there. The next one. The air raid patrol. One of the very important things that happened at that time is the rationing started which goes on till now. The ration shops started in Madras at that time and they said Madras will not starve. Such brave statements were coming in advertisements almost daily. Madras will not starve. We will make sure that there is equitable distribution of food and uh, TUCS actually takes over a lot of these uh, 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 ration shops at that point of time. Next one. This is an interesting thing. What happened during the Demonetization, we didn't have the notes, we were running around. So if you have a one ana coin and it contains two anas of copper, what would you do? Melt it or store it or hold it? Why would I spend it? Why would I spend it for something that is costing me one ana? So that's typically what happened. All your copper was being mined in South America. The ships had been cut off from South America. You could not have, uh, the logistics was completely upset. And people realized that they were having more copper in the coin than the coin was worth. So they started hoarding. And 
absolute the commerce stopped especially in retail stores and uh, hotels you have the police having raids raiding hotels and raiding other places where uh, they thought the coins were being hoarded next one typewriters <laughs> there was a basic scarcity look who is advertising your simpson <laughs> your addison group is advertising saying that they want second hand typewriters anybody can sell second hand typewriters i am willing to take them so in these districts uh, the previous one please yes so this copper uh, i don't know the one slide got missing so the cop how do you handle this how many rates can you have without threatening people in the retail or the hotel industry you have to do something about it then they invent the wotayana it's called the wotayana by making that hole in the middle you are reducing the copper there's no other way you can alter the alloy or do a, a coin uh, so that's they make a hole in the middle so it becomes 19 till 1945 we had this wotayana so people were taught conservation how do you conserve and uh, survive the war the railways advertised saying that don't travel he said don't travel in trains was your last travel a legitimate one or a needed one yes because you have nothing to do don't do it traveling so <laughs> this is not the correct time because uh, even the airlines were advertising saying if you're not if you don't need to travel don't am i blocking for you uh, they had a legitimate reason to do this because next one there was a shortage of locomotives locomotives from madras had been shifted to mesopotamia iraq for to for the war effort and they had the basic locomotive to run your trains but there is operation called shunting you have to put all these carriages in where they belong in the night right you don't have locomotives for that the indian railways actually the southern railway actually employed elephants to do that they push these wagons to where they have belonged uh, uh, coincidentally the elephant was the logo of the southern railways which is also the logo of the so the southern railways now then it was called south india railways so uh, you may have a car but for the petrol there was a ration these are coupons for ration coupons some of these are original these were picked up in a uh, uh, in chettinad uh, uh, an antique collector had that those coupons is not transferable you have to so it's for some arunachalam chettiar of devakote so it's a private vehicle so you have to have these rations to buy petrol the next one transfer there transfer there but only within the city uh, and not most of the places only the main roads so what was happening rubber once again malaysia then it was called malaya malaya was under japanese control so rubber was not coming you couldn't make new tires there was a scarcity of new tires they said you should retreat them there's a plenty of life in your old tires which were the main enemies of tires these harsh or shoes or the bullock shoes so they could tear the tires and make them render them unusable so what does the government do for that next yes this is the the shoeing aspect the next one there was a reward for picking these loose shoes on the road which because they were cutting the tires and what the children did they used to break a shoe into two parts and gain two awards so the government said you give me a full shoe and i'll give you an award that is why it says one anna for six whole shoes so they won't uh, give it for parts of it what were the precautions taken madras was sure to be bombed everybody knew it the british knew it the locals knew it the japanese were very very sure and actually there used to be uh, the clandestine uh, japanese radio talking in tamil daily uh, there used to be a character called black rose the lady it was a lady she says we are going to bomb washerman pet today we are going to bomb raipuram Ra today so they used to have a lot of scare created that was this chitale uh, the man who designed the lic but what is he doing in the war during world war 2 madras had a post called the chief camouflage officer Madras had a lot of funny, funny officers during that time. There was even an officer to buy sore cigars for Winston Churchill. He used to buy them from Trichy and send it to London every week or so. A shipment, a secret shipment went, and there was a person sitting in Fort Saint George whose only duty was to buy cigars for the British Prime Minister. And after freedom and after Winston lost, this person was comfortably seated in uh, Fort Saint George. Nobody knew why he was sitting there, and he didn't say that my job is over. but he was fired in 1956 or something so chitale was the chief camouflage officer so what does a camouflage officer do hide the city from the air a plane should not be able to identify you during night because most planes came in the nights because in the morning they would be shot down by anti aircraft guns so chitale had his high secret job he was an architect from ratnagiri he came over he interned at lancaster who wrote the first book of architecture about madras and then he was asked to hide 
the most obvious landmarks of the city and he did a full book on that which is available in internet archives on how to hide a city from the aerial warfare of course after 47 the radar came out into a big thing and hiding a city doesn't really mean anything once you have the coordinates they can bomb anything so Chitale quietly after the war moved into private practice then he does the LIC uh, in the 1950s the tallest building LIC was the tallest building in India for two years the the previous tallest structure in Madras before the LIC was coincidentally the same height 177 feet was the chimney in the Kiel Park waterworks the chimney still stands so for two years LIC was the tallest building before it was overtaken by a building in a uh, Bombay today it is not even in the top 15 Madras so how construction has changed these are the trenches 22 miles of trenches was dug in the roads so whenever you hear a war siren you had to jump into a trench or go into a building and uh, they were advertised regular advertisement said when the siren wails take shelter if in a building stay there if in the open take shelter in the nearest building go to a slit trench people were given an, uh, a pamphlet identifying planes to see if they were friendly planes or Japanese planes so you can't technically you can't jump into a trench every time you hear a plane so you have to know if it is an enemy plane so they gave them uh, this was the original a copy of the original and aircraft recognition of the nation, Japanese Navy because we were very sure the Andamans had been taken by the Japanese but Andaman was still far for uh, the planes range to come and bomb Madras and go so they had to take off from an aircraft carrier so it, it had to be the Japanese Navy so these are the aircraft which could take off from the this is a funny thing a watch now the watches are getting extinct again except that the politicians have a watch of uh, four and a half crores and five crores it's become a status symbol or uh, most of us look at the time in the cell phones those days watches were very very expensive so were clocks so four o'clock in the evening a gun used to boom in the fort st george the word of mouth was that most of the babies in madras were born around that time because of the pregnancies which were induced by that shock of the gun booming but just imagine a, a gun booming at 4 o'clock a cannon booming at 4 o'clock when you are expecting the Japanese to come so the government prudently stopped the uh, gun booming at 4 o'clock and they never resumed it all night blackout in the city cars had to uh, hide their lights there were a lot of automobile accidents happening and immediately Spencer and Co innovative business they saying we are trying to sell double craft paper you can put it on your windows you don't have to bother about uh, blackouts you can still have your lights on so all those products are for glass reflectors uh, paints black paints and all these are to escape the blackouts so there's a lot of knee jerk uh, activity uh, knee jerk reactions this is Maria Montessori coming to Madras Montessori had been identified by the Theosophical Society next to Fort St. George the maximum impact of the Europeans was in uh, Theosophical Society we had people coming from everywhere there so Arundel actually uh, recognizes Montessori much before her peak comes and he brings her to Madras Montessori is arrested when she arrives in Madras because she comes from Italy Italy is an uh, enemy country uh, India has actually declared war on Italy so she's arrested her son is arrested but because Arundel is a very important person in Madras she is kept under house arrest in Adair while her son Mario spends the entire war time in a prisoner of war camp in Pallavaram they had a prisoner of war camp in Madras so they were uh, having Mario there but while I'm here I should also talk about the Theosophical Society so just it's across the uh, water this side I guess yes this side and Theosophical Society though started by an Ukrainian and an American has triggered a lot of reform in Madras in fact Alcott who started uh, uh, the Theosophical Society ran a school for the Panjamers he started a school uh, he started the first midday meal scheme in a private school and he's also known as the white Buddhist the, the Buddhist flag that you see with the five colors if you go to Sri Lanka or Burma was designed by Alcott who just lived across the river we had a lot of people we had Margaret Cousins who set to music your national anthem national anthem was something that you read out you don't sing so Margaret Cousins sets it to music though not in Madras in Banganapalli and Madanapalli and of course but she died lived and died in Adair she also lived in the Theosophical Society so Maria Montessori did a lot of work when she was under house arrest and uh, that is the big uh, the chunk of the Montessori education today which was done in Madras so this Kruvilla Jacob, Jacob who was later the principal of the MCC college so he says don't panic don't run away from your homes but pay your fees in full advance now that's what he says uh, 
asking parents not to be scared of the bombing but also pay the fees term in full advance this april by april itself so everybody was trying to be careful they knew the japanese would come and things would change so they were uh, pushing towards that this is a very tragic thing now most of us have heard about this right now so what happens if a bomb falls in a zoo the animals are already hungry underfed so what if they get out this was not a problem faced by madras alone it was faced by all countries with major zoos in fact berlin hitler zoos they refused to do anything about it they were bound by the royal air force and they had to hunt the tigers and the panthers from road to road street to street fighting so in madras people are scared they have a lot of uh, uh, tigers lions bears panthers reptiles anything could get out and what do they do so they uh, the order comes from the government to the corporation which controls the zoo that they have to shoot all the animals there we have a, uh, a very interested mayor called chakrai chetty who literally begs every city in uh, india please take our animals we can uh, give them free as well as the transport free but every zoo is facing the same trouble they don't have the feed they don't have the manpower and the same thing of the zoo could be bombed so finally erod zoo agrees to take the animals but 3 days before that the government says by tonight you have to shoot the shoot the animals so the malabar police marches into the zoo the zoo was exactly where your suburban railway station is there next to the central where your booking station is there uh, before, long long before it went into wonderlord so the the herbivorous animals at least were shifted to uh, erod in a week but lots of tigers lions were shot the next one of course madras got emptied then the typical what happened during your covid time so literally one third of madras left the city and uh, went to their native places so people whom they had not wished for half a dozen diwalis suddenly they were sending letters saying that we will come we will join you people who did not have relatives to go to but one thing we have noticed in madras is everybody has a native place so uh, one of my college professors used to say uh, if somebody claimed to be a native of madras uh, then he would be a fisherman because everybody else came in or the grandfather came in so so everybody has a native place so they could always move to safety the next one gandhi advised the madrasis he said don't panic don't move out and uh, uh, it is a task as typical as the mahatma this war a demonstration of the unthinkable nerve of man because madras was a, perhaps the only presidency where this evacuation was about to happen in a very big way already was not bombed we'll come to that now so so what happens is first the government says that the japanese won't bomb it is only a rumor nothing will happen and finally they say you shift from exposed positions so the collector moves to stellamaris the stellamaris was not there so can somebody tell me when stellamaris was founded 15th of august 1947 it's a coincidence I understand exactly the back side of our rosary metric. Where you enter through Palace Road, which is now Papanasam Seven Sale. That is how you enter. So we had a nunnery there. We had a nunnery where the present uh, uh, Sela Maris is there. The map actually shows a small stream on Kathiriri Road, and there's a bridge, uh, wooden uh, planks placed across so that people could walk in. They have the building called the Cloisters, where they have the Commerce Department. Right, the Commerce Department is right now. The collector of Madras shifted there. The courts were shifted to Coim uh, Coimbatore. prisoners and lunatics from the asylum in kilpak they were shifted out of madras lot of things went to bellary interiors so the government moved first before informing the private people next one yeah the collector of madras goes to have you ever seen a change of address for a collector he advertises in the paper saying that i am sitting in a new office from uh, so and so date tahsildar uh, of madras moves to vanaparthi palace city civil court moves to chengalpet and madras gpo moved to remote to mount road they were afraid that the japanese would attack the beach first they thought it will be a naval operation it will be a landing operation so the beach road becomes empty so in fact ttk shift from there to the present cathedral address tt krishnamachari 111 armenian street to number 2 cathedral road where they still are indian overseas bank can anybody tell me where this rama vilas is what is it now the mctm school mctm school next to the tanjaneer temple and alwar pet that is where the indian overseas bank moved all all in april april 1942 next one this is a painting uh, this is a, actually a, a watercolor painting which i copied from the collection of vikram raghavan of the world bank and this shows that how people moved out in fact the pundamalai high road was year marked for bullock carts the porur road that porur uh, kundratur road was marked for vehicles 
so that they would not interfere anyway so one side traffic people are moving out at great speeds when you want to go out of a city what do you do you want to lock your house so the biggest lock making units in dindical we are making 500 locks a month whereas madras needs 50000 locks it's going to take another 10 years so how do you go without locking but everybody got their locks what is happening a typical uh, that ingenuity of the madras thief uh, a group of thieves were stealing locks and reselling them in the market fitting them with keys so the same locks were coming again and again people did not realize it the police realized it then they discover and they uh, actually uh, arrest a group of gang of thieves who were uh, stealing these locks so avadi which i was talking about avadi was on the railway track it was sufficiently far from the uh, the sea and avadi a lot of people uh, do say that it is about his armaments they put up an acronym for that it's not true avadi is a name which is mentioned even in the chola uh, uh let us say this uh, inscriptions the turning of the propeller <laughs> had to be done by physically by people so and a lot of manpower was moving towards avadi because they were getting employment in the avadi uh, air base there were not enough airports 23 airports came all over tamil nadu we have one airport in ulundurpet we have an airport one in Ka karaikudi of course it was private it was actually the government took it over so airports were built everywhere even in tanjur so for planes to land and still you did not have enough airports or airstrips to land so sea planes landed in riddles which was close enough to avadi so these are the catalina planes landing in uh, riddles luckily you have a lot of riddles has a lot of link with uh, the world war so finally when the japanese bomb there is a rumor that the riddles has broken and madras is being flooded when it did not really happen that way today even some days the normal planes can land in riddles <laughs> there was no water there so finally madras was bombed it was born for one day in this entire war the hysteria was there for four years mass hysteria was there you see all those things happening all the scarcities and such an anti climax when a japanese plane does come and better bomb madras on one day for five days nobody knows that madras has been bombed and finally they find a red cross advertisement asking for blood donations uh, that madras has been bombed and uh, why was madras not knowing it one was the sensor the second thing the word of mouth didn't go because Uh, there was a lot of rain, a huge cyclone, something like that. 2015 was happening, and Madras was under water. There was no electricity. The newspapers did not come. So all your effort of uh, tackling the Japanese bomber went to waste because people did not even know that they had been bombed. And there was a rumor because of the huge water uh, logging everywhere. People said that the Japanese had bombed Red Hills, and Madras was flooded because of that. This rumor went on for another 10 years because we know that Andhanaar movie was made in 1952-53. uh the, exactly a person who is saying the secrets of the dams and the lakes for the japanese to bomb short raid on madras few bombs dropped very slight casualties so actually a few uh, a goat herd died north of the uh, fort and a few goats died the bomb is kept in uh, the fort museum you can have a look at it it's kept along with the emden uh, bombing emden bo bombing happened in the world war 1 madras is perhaps the only city in the country which was attacked both during world war 1 and world war 2 so we participated in both world wars so europe once the victory comes and uh, there's a lot of uh, and if you see island ground seems to be one of the centers of activity for celebrations in fact one of the main flags to be hoisted in 1947 was on island grounds and ripon grounds we don't have records of flags being hoisted in the fort st george at all most of the newspapers is about the reports are about these two things but these are the meetings that was having we had sports we have uh, uh, processions we are prize giving by the governor's wife and because once europe once uh, germany surrendered two to go two down that is italy and germany down japan to go so we'll come out of this horrific topic of uh, wars perhaps we can move on to scandals we can move over other things because 1940s was not only about wars we had other things happening we had lot of politics happening we had the quit india movement happening so the next one the queen from alwar pet we are going to talk about three controversial weddings today so sita devi was one of the prettiest women in madras she was married had three children she was a daughter of the zamindar of pitapuram madras had a lot of zamindars zamindars were not kings most of the places they were glorified tax collectors of postage sized territories but some of them were kings the vijayanagaram for example were a king which had been downgraded by the british as a zamindar but they had a lot of money and their native places was very very uh, let's say boring so most of them moved to madras 
uh, had a race club here we had parties here they even participated in uh, beauty pageants in madras in 1940s so a lot of activities were happening here so she was the wife of a zamindar of uyiru the next one the gaikwad of baroda comes for the races every year and the gaikwad falls in love with her the gaikwad is one of the richest men in the world they have the best jewelry collection in india one of the biggest revenue generating states in the country was baroda and they even have a picasso a horse rider picasso and he falls in love with uh, sita so it has already married so she becomes she divorces her husband then she becomes a muslim then marries a gaikwad who comes from uh, baroda which has a bigamy loss where you can't marry a second time but the king says uh, those rules are for the common men not for the kings so he marries her and when sardar patel takes over baroda in 1947 looks at the inventory of the treasury of baroda none of the jewels are there the couple of taken out all their jewels from baroda making the state much much poorer and they take it, took it to europe where they had a very very high standard of living and to fund that high living they had to sell some of the jewelry and most of them surfaced in the royal families of europe so duchess of windsor she has a Uh, harry winston makes a necklace of emeralds they were supposed to be half the size of a pigeon egg they are a necklace of uh, uh, emeralds and uh, they meet in a party so they meet in a party uh, sita and the duchess of windsor so sita says sita had actually had it as an anklet or uh, kala golu samadhi she had put those diamonds earlier so she says they look as nice on your neck as they looked on my feet the duchess sold all the uh, the emeralds the next day and sita of course was one of the big uh, she lived you can identify her the place where she lived was mures gate road alwar pet uh, rani uh, raja surya road and uh, rani chinamba road so those are all where the raja pitapuram stayed this was the picasso they had the horse rider and the divan of uh, baroda resigns in protest against his wedding i think we could not confirm this this could be venkatraagavan's grandfather venkatraagavan the cricket player his grandfather it could be because he was also uh divan of baroda at that time the second of course is i just walked down till the music college before the uh, it started i came a little early and you have ms subalakshmi statue there so sada shivam and ms subalakshmi uh so ms subalakshmi came from a devadasi community she comes to act in movies and sing uh, in uh, kacheris in madras then of course she marries uh, sada shivam in trinir malai this is chanmuga vadivu her mother was a veena player this character people had long memories So when we have Tilana Moganamal film coming in, what is the name of Padmini's mother in the movie? Vadivu. Uh, so somebody had Kothamangalam uh, Subu Paras remembered the story of Shanmuga Vadivu and how she tried to torture her daughter, and she does the exact character of her in uh, Tilana Moganamal. So once Sada Siva marries M S in Trinir Malai, Trinir Malai was after that for the next forty years is a well-known place for uh, runaway couples. until uh, the rules became very strong in tamil nadu for uh, uh, love marriages that's why we call them love marriage or arranged marriage but now for a uh, uh, registered marriage the mother of the bride has to sign so i don't think romances have a great future in this place periyar and maniyamai of course i think this is this marriage was politically a very very important marriage in the history of tamil nadu so then periyar marries a much younger girl all his lieutenants opposed to it when he says not to the marriage actually they oppose when he says she will be my heir for my philosophy and my wealth and that is when people will get angry and they start the dmk so that the entire history of the state changes with one wedding anna of course and karunanidhi of course mgr was a much much smaller person who was not even a part of uh, a dmk then he was a congressman madhilagan lot of people went of course they came into talking terms later but in 1967 we had this total opposing uh, periyar campaigning against the dmk and uh, raja ji campaigning for the dmk in 1967 i think uh, politics has very few uh, memories and very strange bed fellows 1940s also you have one third of the city exiting fearing the japanese but when you look at the demographics you see that the population has doubled from 1940 to 1950 the population of the city doubles so we can technically say uh, it is just an arithmetic doubling but it's not so if you have if you have eaten four at least in the morning you would get only two If you had six glasses of water, you will have only three. So there would have been a lot of problems if the government had not handled it. So I always tell people, uh, we have vacated the city for Corona. We vacated the city for the war. But have we vacated the city because we didn't get water? There are no natural sources of water here. 
the rivers have been dry from 19 madras had its first dam in 1868 just remember 1857 the sipai mutiny is over in delhi 1868 we have a dam the dam still stands next to tamarai pakkam diverting the kosasaliar into the redils so the city the fathers of the city had always been planning to give adequate water and food to the so this is how the population doubles 1941 to 1951 an important source of water the pundi lake even today when you see from one side you cannot see the other end of pundi it's such a large lake was done in it was planned in one year those days the mayorship was for one year we have satyamurthy as the mayor satyamurthy it is today called satyamurthy sagar but the british refused to name it after him it was named after independence so satyamurthy is the mayor of madras when the congress decides to contest elections so when he is a mayor for one year he decides on pundi they decide on damming the kosasaliar and diverting water but it's war time and lot of money is going to go in lot of steel lot of cement is going to go in and the government finally fears it might go wrong and would become a black mark so what do they do they start damming all the rivers in the vicinity and divert it inside one of the very important rivers to be dammed is the kuom the kuom was stopped at the starting of the river and diverted into the pundi lake so there is one reason why uh, the kuom stinks today is just like your toilet not having water to flush we don't have if you ask anybody in madras why the kuom is stinking why it's dirty they would say it's drainage absolutely not almost one glass of water that you drank today came from the kuom basin so uh, a lot of geographical changes happened in the 1940s as well this is the dam being built in the kuom it is called the kesavaram dam it is very close to the takkolam it is something you should all walk and visit you can see the two rivers splitting the kosasaliar and the kuom splitting and a dam diverting the water into the kosasaliar in 1920s the ruling the fathers of the city decide that there should be a middle class uh, location for people to settle and the last time people were living in very cramped situations in george town it was earlier black town then it became george town and the first expansion was of course pudupak pudupet pudupet where the chitra theater is across mount road cosmopolitan club so that was the location where the milliners moved that was your poets garden that was your boat club those days a uh, milliners lived and pachepa mudaliya writes in his diary that he used to have a bath in the kuom river and go to the uh, the temple there but we never had a organized settlement for residents we had chindadri pet or we had kaladi pet as textile towns people weavers came even if you see today the roads in chindadri pet would be straight lines that is not because of design that is to put your looms the thari border the kage it has to be straight lines so in people had a problem crossing the adaya to live naturally because the theosophical society was 150 acres on this side dark no lights it was a forest on this on the left side and the right side you had a huge territory belonging to the patrician brothers st patrick st michael school the school ground came up to malar hospital so what happens there is one uh priest a bishop archbishop he has a road in his name in boat club archbishop matthias he actually makes the church poorer by a few hundred crores or perhaps a few thousand crores two territories that is sold entire gandhinagar is sold for 17 lakhs entire gandhinagar was sold for 17 lakhs to the government to lay this and he did one building in all the, the catholic center was built because uh, with those funds then he was also the person to sell the boat club the boat club belonged had been built by de monte to the poor of the church and the specific uh, line saying that you can't sell it only the income can be used for the poor and the sick but they broke the law they uh, they challenged it in court had the court amend the will and the entire boat club was sold in the 1940s so gandhi nagar was started as a middle class uh environment just across the river the dam was, the, the the bridge was already there there was no geographical hindrance for you to cross the river but people had a psychological uh this is about crossing in 1921 i was, I was saying they would rather close the biggest lake in the city the long tank long tank was 5 and 1/2 miles long and 1 and 1/2 miles wide they closed it to form tinagar so they they could sacrifice so much for housing but they did not want to cross the adayar where there was ample land so gandhinagar was the first and a very successful move of urban madras so it moved into and once this sold the the government built houses the precursor of the housing board the, i think the city improvement trust or somebody did that and uh, these houses were sold then the kasturi banagar comes the nehru nagar comes the other nagars soon follow so in a war time 
in a time of scarcity when you don't have sponsors you expect the arts not to grow you are expect the arts to be stagnant but 1940s was a blossoming period for arts i'm not even touching uh, the sivagami in sambadham done by kalki which perhaps is best book was you can find so much it is written during war time it was written during a independence movement you find big wars and at one point he talks about a war field in which there's a mound of uh, severe limbs and uh, animals dying animals dying people and he actually stops the paragraph and says only a homer or a vyasa can continue please excuse me a novelist saying this half way in a paragraph so sivagami so sabadam was serialized in kalki magazine at that time there was a huge paper scarcity which induced devan of anand vigna to do one one page novels i mean one page serials rather the entire story would be of one one page every week and it would be over in 13 weeks so the first uh, work of creativity to be nationalized was bharatiyas much ahead of rabindranath tagore much ahead of gandhi much ahead of the rest of the people so that happens in the 1940s it is very interesting uh, aspect that gandhi uh, this uh, uh, bharati's wife sells all his poetry to suraj mal a gujarati jeweler who has a gramophone company suraj mal identifies that bharatiya songs could be potential hits in the future so he buys entire rights of bharatiya's written text for 500 rupees and then they close down the gramophone company and avm buys it for 9500 rupees from him avm uses some of his songs in his movies but finally what happens is avm is very very sensitive about other people using these songs in uh, their movies so when the tks brothers want to use in bilhanan they want to use a uh, bharatiya song he takes them to court and then there is a lot of voice saying that bharati cannot belong to one person bharati has to belong to the state but uh, the typical showman that av mayapan is he decides that the tide is going against him he donates the rights of bharati's poetry to the country so it's a proper deed between the governor and av mayapan chettiar schedule 1 schedule 2 listing the poetry of bharati so this was like a typical that is a will or a sale deed this is another book that was restored this is the first book to be banned in madras presidency for obscenity this was a poem written by budupalani budupalani was a devadasi who was a lover of the marathi king in uh, tanjore so he writes a song about a threesome let us say uh, krishna radha and a, a fictional character called ila so radha feels that she is getting old so she is actually training another person to become a wife for a lover of krishna this is written in erotic poetry uh, over uh, in telugu for an entire book so this is uh, nagaratnamma who also built the temple for tyagayya in tiruvayyar so she identifies two or three texts combines them corrects the mistakes and publishes it and immediately the telugu speaking population of madras the telugu speaking population of madras would have been 60 70% in 1910s so they start a big uh, right saying this book has to be banned and it was banned in 1910 somewhere around 1910 so in 1947 when prakasam prakasam becomes the chief minister of the madras prime madras chief minister of the madras presidency he releases the ban along with bharatiya's poetry he says i am restoring pearls to telugu literature the original most of us might not be able to understand because it is telugu far away from andhra and telugu 200 years back but the translation by in uh, penguin is a very good uh, read prakasam of course was one of the very few people to be chief minister of two states madras presidency as well as andhra so so much of history around this building so just to the south to the uh, to the east of this raja namle jetiar was living so when i'm listening to a song a carnatic song and it is in telugu i don't understand the words so they started a movement for uh, kacheri should be done in tamil the tamilisai movement and the music academy was very very against music academy is very very easy to anger a very tough it was ever like a citadel or like a rock you can't shake them so what happens in 1930s we have a violinist called chaudeya all the chaudeya does is add three strings on his violin it has to be have four or three so he makes it seven so his noise is so much in the pre mic kacheris that the main singer is afraid that his voice will be drowned so they went and complained to the music academy the music academy actually convinces the general body committee meeting to ban chaudeya chaudeya is actually called as soundeya during those days because he was drowning the voices of the actual singer so what does chaudeya do chaudeya is a very big musician a genius but he he is not want to be cowed down by the music academy 
he goes and starts his own sabha with a clerk a telugu speaking clerk working in uh, corporation of madras he starts the indian fine arts academy which still happens with the kacheris happen every now they do it in i think etraj kalan mandapam in mobur ntt geron so they want some vip to come and inaugurate the indian fine arts academy so who do they call they call anamalai chettiar anamalai chettiar comes and talks to them what are you i am a violinist what are you i am a clerk anamalai <laughs> chettiar thinks if a clerk and a violinist can start a sabha so can i i have i have a university i have a bank i can do anything i want so a few years later the tamil society sangam comes into being and started mainly by uh anamalai chettiar there was there were a group of people asking songs to be sung in tamil this included ms subalakshmi ms subalakshmi was not allowed to sing in the music academy if you go today you will have a photograph of ms subalakshmi in the uh, entrance the lobby of the music academy you will have a great granddaughter singing the first song and you will uh, soon have a statue of her there but the point is she was banned for 6 7 years so there were attempts to make it a brahmin anti brahmin non brahmin uh, uh, fight but people like rajaji sadashivam kalki and of course ms subalakshmi would come to personify women uh, the brahmin woman would she they were all on the side of the tamil side so they the the conversion uh, politics never happened but tamil side sangam did one very good supplementary activity other than having the kacheris on the same day as the music academy as a challenge and drawing half the crowd they also knew that there were not enough tamil songs to sustain for a long time so they went about searching everywhere they asked people to write and lot of tamil isai started that time that was the time most of the tirupugal was put to tune most of the devarams were put to tune people started enjoying tamil music in gatherings papana sanga of course was writing for the movies that is why i didn't mention it right now he was also writing for the music a uh, movies and lot of songs by papana sam sivan of course are being sung today even in the music academy papana sam sivan has uh, let us say uh, typically you have nagesh talking that uh, piece of dialogue that poetry in poverty can never uh, be dissociated varumayum pulamayum he is a papana sam sivan though he wrote a few thousand songs never saw prosperity in his life so uh, papana sam sivan was a tutor in uh, uh, that was his bread and butter though he wrote so many cinema songs that was his uh, he was a tutor in music uh, theosophical society in fact there is a school i think it's alcott school or the theosophical school which has a prayer called devi vasante written in the vasanta ragam by uh, papana sam sivan do you know who this vasante is ani besant ani besant's indian name you still have a vasanta press road uh, in adayar so ani besant's indianized name was vasante so papana sam sivam of course because he mentioned it i had to tell that so what does sada sivam do they never saw it is going on parallelly it's going to happen i'll tell you that so what happens uh, sada sivam is uh, a giant uh, and uh, aggressively uh, this uh, intense giant who made ms subalakshmi what she is today so ms subalakshmi is banned from the music academy he goes and starts his own sabha the mailapur sangeetha sabha and look what he says that advertisement the sabha has been started in response to the increasing demand from the intelligent public <laughs> that means people who are going he says the people who go to music academy are dunces so he says that and it, most of these kacheris are happening and neither of them have their own sabha building so those days sabhas used to happen in thatched with scorpions falling from the top occasionally when the mridagam of the singer went into euphoria but they both start collecting money wo uh, sadasivam starts collecting money and the music academy starts collecting money to build their own auditorium and sadasivam is far far ahead everybody knows how much he has collected because he doesn't bother about it he says i have collected so much and finally the compromise comes between the music academy and the uh, mailapur sangeetha sabha this is wound up and till the last paisa sadasivam gave all the money that he had collected to build the music academy the music academy today stands on money collected by ms subalakshmi and sadasivam dance this was a important development in 1940s and it just happened across the river uh, the sadar sadar of course uh, was a dance of the temples by the devadasis devadasis of course were not only dancers the first strike in india workmen strike in india happened by the devadasis in the tiruvattur temple when they went on strike during the vijayanagar times the entire temple had to shut down saying that they were not only doing dance they had other activities in the temple as well and so sadar of course over the times because it gets a very bad name and uh, people in 1930s 20s want to ban it they want to ban it uh, for the good of that community as well as the good of the society there are people like bala saraswati who used to sit outside the courts when these cases were happening give out bills saying that devadasi system should not be banned and when mutulakshmi reddy tries to ban get this banned as a private bill she finds that congressmen who are in her 
party uh, do not support her whereas the opposition the justice party was supporting her that person on the right is a gentleman named krishna ayer krishna ayer was the secretary of the music academy for almost 25 years so he and rukmini devi arundel of course uh, are the biggest impetus that dance ever had so krishna ayer there was this drama company of uh, pammal sambandha mudaliyar called suguna vilas sabha they used to have the dramas in victoria public hall uh, at that time drama actors were called kutadis they were not having too much of respect in the public forums so uh, pammal sambandha mudaliyar who was a lawyer and who later became a small causes judge decides that it's time that actors get their due respect so what he does is he forms a drama club the suguna vilas sabha and make sure that only graduates can act and soon you have a top lawyers acting including satyamurthy uh, we have top lawyers acting and the rumor was always that if you want to become a judge go and act in sukuna vilas sabha because you will meet other judges and you can become a judge faster so krishna ayer is very interested in doing his uh, a place and he is very feminine looking so they want him to do the female characters the three part you have three major parts the raja part the stree part and the kalla part kalla part is of course the villain so these three are the most important in the and the bala part of course the children always do a lot of crowds most of our top actors started in bala part shivaji mgr everybody started in that and most of them have also done the stree parts in fact chandralekha which was one of the very big movies made during this time by vasan uh, all that shivaji asked for was our uh, uh, the role of a soldier he didn't ask to be a hero or the second hero he went to vasan asked for a role vasan did not like him vasan said you have a squint eye you sir you shout your uh, dialogues so you better stay in the stage don't listen to these fellows at at within 5 6 years shivaji becomes a superstar and vasan has to stand at his gate for irumbuthirai and uh, beg him for call sheets so let's get back to krishna ayer krishna ayer is doing the three parts in pamal samandha mudaliyar that it involves a lot of dance so he wants to learn dance so that he can do the role effectively so he moves to uh the devadasis remaining the few devadasis remaining in the temples so gauri amma in mailapur was one so krishna ayer learns dance from her and starts performing but then he loves the nuances of dance he says if the devadasis are banned this dance will get lost forever somebody has to revive them this house still stands this is the first house on the left when you enter the theosophical society this was the house where bharatanatyam was started where the sadhiratam became the bharatanatyam so what does rukmini devi arundel do Krishna Iyer is uh, calls sir invites sir to the music academy to watch a dance that he has set up for the first time two devadasis dancing i think it was banumati dancing and she comes back she has just been inspired by anna pavlova in a ship uh, trip to australia and rukmini devi arundel decides to start bharatanatyam bharatanatyam is a name that people always say that even bharathiyar says bharatam that was 20 years earlier but i don't know whether he meant this exactly so bharatanatyam is a name that she coined krishna Iyer says that i coined it but the dance was formed in this house what did she do she removed all uh, sensual parts of the dance she made it very religious she picked up only religious stories she had an idol of nataraja on the stage she had the musicians on stage so she she actually sanitized sanitized the dance and made it as a package for the uh, upcoming middle class so where does dance survive today i think in the united states in 30 years from now your dancers will come from uh, united states almost every child in united states studies dance or uh, karate music it's become very focused so uh, she starts this there's a very interesting uh, rumor which was actually the people say was expunged in the corporation so there's this discussion between satyamurthy and muthulakshmi reddy in the corporation when muthulakshmi reddy is arguing for the banning of uh, the sadhiratam in temples and satyamurthy says you will come for the dance today you will come for the temples tomorrow you will come for the hinduism third so we won't allow Muthulakshmi Reddy, whose mother was a Devadasi, she gets so angry. She says, "Yamadu magali radi vittar." Ini umadu magali radu tom. Our women have danced. Let your women dance. So in today, I think uh, words have come mostly true because dance has become very sanitized. It's become part of the middle class, and there's no disrespect to have a dancer at home. But the person who popularized Bharatanatyam to what it is today is Kumari Kamala. Two dancers of her for Bharathiyar songs in. Now, Miruva. Those days, most of the posters even had English words, the rough translation of those words. So, Kumari Kamala, of course, who married uh, the cartoonist Lakshman later. Lakshman had two wives; both were called Kamalas. So, there's a lot of confusion. The second Kamala is actually a writer of children's books. So, 
uh, this dance after this movie came every mother was dragging every mother or grandmother was dra dragging the the kid at home to the dance class dance class sprouted in every road so bharatanatyam became a, a part of the tamil culture though it started in what it was in 1940s you can see who danced say the dance bharatanatyam is named in 1940 till 1930s women used to close their windows when the dancers came on the streets the dancers used to uh, walk on the streets before the ther dance on the streets so you can see shrimati saroja and sudha granddaughters of tv sundaram ayengar so tv's granddaughters were dancing to public programs less than 10 years you can see the reformation in the attitude to this of course this is mailai sangeetha sabha once again uh, sada sivam sabha the tamil movie had started talking in 1931 and the moment it started talking it started singing so it became a real musical and with the gramophone record what is the advantage of a gramophone record it needs no electricity you just have to wind it you can sing your songs you can replicate your uh, talks the gramophone records actually you have kb sundaram bal singing for every event if kamala nehru died a song would be written and lg should be written for her and it should be recorded on a gramophone record it should be in the market within 15 days that was the speed with which they were working so what happens in 1940s the main manufacturer of film is in japan and uh, germany both of you are, which are enemy countries and the limited films that you have need to be conserved for the war effort so they say the tavari tamil movie was around 25000 to 30000 feet you had songs for everything in haridas when the daughter in law says things that she wants to deposit her father in law and mother in law in a old age home or equivalent of old age home he says it in a song we, we have her vasanta kokilam singing a song that i am going to put my father in law and mother in law in a old age home she sings happily so you had a song for almost everything and suddenly when you see the size of a movie being reduced by 50% or even 60 65% people really lost their wits how can i write a movie in one third the size they go and argue with the government the government is very clear they say uh, you cannot tag two movies of because they knew they would do part one like bahubali 1 and bahubali 2 ponne zalan 1 and 2 and tag it so they said only one movie of 11000 can be screened at one show and all the major studios had to take a war effort movie you have to make a movie supporting the british war effort that is burma rani that is actually sundaram of modern theaters of selam a big movie mogul who uh, acts like a hitler like character 1947 we have miss malini rk narayan writes the screenplay so you have a lot of rk narayan movies made into plus guide is my personal favorite but this is one which he sat in mount road and wrote the uh, screenplay for and miss malini and of course the songs were i think kottamangalam subu wrote the songs for it so 1947 or to 1957 what happens is everybody is praising everybody is talking about the 1857 sepoy mutiny they are talking about rani jansi they are talking about uh, netaji and tamil nadu abruptly has no freedom fighters to talk of very few and whose stories have not been told today you know about kapalot de tamil nadu or veerapande katta woman after the movies came those days nobody was talking about them in miss malini kottamangalam subu writes a song where a girl who is about to be married dreams of the child that she is going to have and says he will be as brave as netaji uh, gandhi and katta woman people who went to the movies did not know who katta woman was who is he and immediately everybody starts uh, writing about him you have half a dozen books coming about katta woman most of that is fiction because he was a telugu person that that uh, fiery dialogue that shivaji talks in his movie he possibly couldn't have and uh, once his movies that uh, katta woman comes 1957 the uh, katta woman movie is made and then katta woman becomes a superstar i would say katta woman was rediscovered like many other people for example in 1892 this is a story which is not confirmed so we have uh, uve swaminathan iyer the grand old man of tamil literature not because he wrote because he collected old texts and had them printed he was going around looking for sponsors he goes to uh, mayavaram talks to the adinam who says go and meet Ra this ramasamy mudaliyar who is going to fund a lot of tamil texts when he goes to ramasamy mudaliyar he asks what have you read in tamil Uve Samina there talks about uh, Villi Bharatham or he talks about uh, Kambara Mayanam, he talks about other things. Ramasana Mudhali just asks him one thing, have you read Silapadikara? The classical response that has been imagined or told again and again is, Uve Samina there asks, Apdina, what are you talking about? So Silapadikara in 1890 with your Kanagi was not known, though there were stories about coal and going around in uh, street dramas and other places. So Silapadikara gets published in 1890s, 1917 we have a movie about kovalan 1930s we have a talkie about kanagi with kannamba 1967 we have a statue to kanagi 
the same like katabum i would say the popularity of a character is if your grandchildren or children play that role in a fancy dress you go to a fancy dress today you love a kanagi you love a katabum and sure so these people were all identified in afterthought this was perhaps the biggest scandal of the 1940s it is equivalent to arresting uh, mgr after ulagam sutram volleyball or uh, rajinikanth after basha it is the top star mk tyagaraja bagavad was arrested after haridas the entire world was talking about hitler's suicide in the bunker where madras was talking about mkt bagavad and ns krishnan sentence for life i wouldn't go too much into the details there was a sudden interest into the personal lives of actors and musicians and politicians and religious heads and there was a blackmailer called lakshmi kanthan who, who ran two uh, magazines one after another the second indonesian in which he used to publish stories with veiled references to some people or in some cases as bagavad he mentioned the names so for hashmani or because he started thinking that he was a knight in shining armor to save the morality of the people so suddenly one day he gets killed in uh, kilpa veperi road and uh, 20 days after that mk tyagaraj bagavad is arrested at the peak of his career when aridas has been released tyagaraj bagavad of course people imagine that he is not going to come out of the jail for long and haridas goes on to run for 3 years not exactly 3 years a diwali to two the second diwali two and a half years it runs they get acquitted after going up to the privy council but by then their career had gone mainly because some of the things can be related the absence of mk tyagaraj bagavad also reduced the music in most of the movies we started getting movies with fiery dialogues so we needed dialogue writers karnanidhi came in we needed anna anna came in of course and we had a lot of activities like this and most of mkt's movies were religious about saints when that religious aspect went away from the theaters the atheism also increased in tamil nadu if you look at it in a long run perhaps in next century when you look at it you can read that the atheism started in a big way in the common man of course the politicians are the so the the people who are doing uh, the atheism for uh, an activity they were talking about it but the common man never uh, subscribed to atheism in a big way but after mkt bagavad yes who is this mgr of course not jalta that's malathi uh, mgr dancing as an extra in one of the movies and 1943 only 12 movies came and from 1937 MJ acted as an extra in 14 movies nobody even knew he had a future uh, there was already there's always a uh, i wouldn't call it a rumor a uh, belief that if you look to a uh, listen to a mk ms subalakshmi song in the morning your whole day goes on properly and the rasi irukku solvanga so ms subalakshmi in that meera movie she gives him the salary as an extra of course the next movie is as a hero in rajakumari in 10 years he becomes a superstar in 20 years he becomes a minister he becomes a politician and 30 years he becomes the chief minister this is another man who could have become very very big that is what i say can take a man out of mailapur but you cannot take mailapur out of a man so the same <laughs> language the same slang is there this is ranjan of course the fiery villain of uh, chandraleka a generation of children ate their meals properly because their mothers threatened that shashankar is going to come so the movie was so well watched ranjan was the typical uh, this this is ranjan with madhubala ranjan the later migrated one of the earliest people to go to bombay act in hindi movies even with madhubala he settled down in bandra and uh, ranjan was one of the, ranjan always insisted on saying ranjan ba because he studied and most of the other actors at that point of time had come from the drama stage in one movie uh, ranjan is the hero and mgr is the villain and uh, mgr actually in a sword fight is angry mgr is very angry and frustrated that he has not become the hero he actually injures the hero but a year later when mgr becomes a hero uh, in velaikari uh, the mgr says you decide the hero you decide the musicians but i will choose the villain because he knows the villain can do exactly the opposite uh, what he did earlier and he chooses a milkman the man who supplies milk to his house this milkman mgr gives 17 movies in a stretch as a call sheet and the milkman becomes as big as vasan and devyam who is he mma chinappa devar chinappa devar of course was the milkman who was supplying milk to mgr house and becomes a he becomes a villain first and then becomes a producer 17 movies of which 15 were mega hits made uh, chinappa dev they had an agreement saying that once mgr you are not supposed to make a movie with anybody very super hero except mgr that's why he went up with smaller heroes like ravi chandran and jay shankar or he made those animal movies later vasan described the mega movie the tamil the tamil and telugu movies that you see even that the hindi the bollywood is afraid of the mega budget the big movies vasan started vasan of course was a 
magazine man dan and the bigda then he starts a distribution then takes over gemini studio when there's a fire accident chandralekha of course you know the drum, drum dance he was of course a man who says tempo ashoka mitran would say ashoka mitran worked for uh, something like 14 years with uh, uh, vasan but not as a writer he was looking after a petrol bunk which was inside the studio the studio was so big they had so many vehicles they had a petrol bunk inside so uh, the man in charge of that and publicity was ashoka mitran ashoka mitran was would say that uh, vasan wanted a lot of tempo in anything he wanted that speed in that movie so he could if you give him a railway turn table he can add tempo to it that is how vasan was and vasan produced a lot of hindi movies in madras as well insaniyat uh, i hope i am producing it right devanand and dilip kumar half way through the movie vasan decides there is no tempo his two uh, heroes who are actually growing very big and bina rai of course there still uh, and he says we'll rather have a monkey also in the story and he imports a chimpanzee from uh, america to act in that so the chimpanzee is given a dance was dominating the movie and many years later when devanand was questioned in an interview what do you think about it he says it's an experience i'll rather forget because the monkey the chimpanzee stole the and the chimpanzee was a the vip in madras he almost every person in madras who had some influence would walk into gemini studio and get themselves photographed with it three valley is one important movie during those times so uh, we have this titania school in northern road mandavali which was the admiralty hotel it was earlier the palace of the vijayanagaram vijayanagaram was a zamindari the 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 zamindar committed suicide so they were thinking about this house being a, a haunted house so it wouldn't go for rent so avm takes it as a on rent and uh, starts his pragati movies he starts srivalli this is uh, rukmani rukmani was one of the most prettiest faces in tamil cinema she was the mother of the actress lakshmi her mother also was actress she was a drama actress nungambakam janaki so is a fourth generation actress i think their uh, granddaughter is so srivalli was a musical and a very pretty heroine they had a elephant here it is about muruga courting valli it's a typical tamil story is going along but valli had uh, but uh, Rukmini had such a horrible voice that the songs were driving the audiences out. I think the habit of going out to smoke during the songs started at that time, and uh, so they don't know what is such a good movie is going to lose out because of the heroine's voice. So what does AVM do? Uh, is the first time that when the movie he brings back the reels from some of the theaters, has T A Periyanayagi singing the same songs, singing with her lips and sending back the reels. So when the, when the movie was in the theaters, he was dubbing the voice. and then dubbing became such a big phenomenon because southern languages were all linked and it enlarged the markets why rukmini was chosen for this role is because she had to be lifted no other actress was willing to be lifted by an elephant she was willing and that's why she was chosen in spite of her uh, horrible voice meera of course duncan a better combination you can never find you have an american director you have uh, ms subalakshmi producing uh, producing and acting this is nagaiya who is the hero who is a rajput prince here and uh, ms subalakshmi uh, Duncan uh, from was from Berkeley introduced a lot of things including your makeup the drunken trolley he also introduced the cabaret dance in the tamil cinema till 1980s a movie could not be released without a cabaret dance so uh, kalki in one of his reviews would say duncan has come all the way from us to spoil the tamil culture but when kalki produces meera who does he call to direct duncan because he can give you a hit so meera is produced and duncan uh, is not allowed into temples where they shot in rajasthan where they shot the movie so they dressed him up like a kashmiri pandit and took him in so uh, sada sivan could do all those things he used to make rubber masks wax wax masks of subalakshmi and try out the lighting so that the movie came out very well so how life treats you is something you cannot expect so this is nagaya statue nagaya was the hero of the movie he has one statue in panagal park i hope it's still there because the metro has dug about everything there ms subalakshmi of course today i saw a statue inside music college she also has a statue in uh, tripathi when you enter the city but this guy in the beard here it's not very clear mgr who oh, acting a small role mgr has something like 20000 statues all over the tamil diaspora so an extra in that movie you don't even know what is going how future is going to treat you meera is also the only movie in which two bharat ratna have acted so both mgr and uh, ms subalakshmi go on to get their bharat ratnas later so it's the only movie in which two bharat ratnas have acted of course i'm going to rush to the rest uh, during quit india movement almost 70% of the political forum was against it the muslim league was against it 
a part of the Congress led by Rajaji was against it. Rajaji, who would become the Governor General of India in 10 years, called Quit India Movement, which is the holiest, which Gandhi said, do or die. It was the biggest thrust which sends the British out. Rajaji called it hooliganism. He said the government should put down the hooliganism. And uh, of course, the Justice Party was against it. And uh, the communists were against it. Communists were, were cutting railway wires, the tracks and the wires everywhere because Russia had joined with England in the World War II effort. So the Communist Party was instructing this cadre not to embarrass the British court. So Kumara Mangalam, Parvati, they also go school, college to college and say it, ask the students not to participate in the Quit India. Rajaji, of course, called it hooliganism. 1947, we got our independence. This flag is a part of uh, the Fort Museum's upper floor. Some of the magazines, the Kalki, the Anand, the Vigadan, which had covers like this. This is how we spent independence. A lot of people don't know that the first governors of Madras after independence were also British. So they took an oath as the governor of Madras. 1948 was a tragic time when Gandhi was assassinated. In Madras, we have, uh, uh, there is one place we don't have, the ashes come to Madras, of course, and almost 30,000 people, they take a bath in the Marina Beach, including the Omandura Redyar, who is the, uh, the, the uh, chief minister of in, uh, Tamil Nadu, of Madras rather, as a father who has passed away. A son whose father has passed away would take a bath, would many of them shave their heads in, uh, tonsil their heads in uh, the Marina. So 1940s, I, I, I stopped this in a very poignant note, was a very rememberable decade, unfortunately was, has been forgotten by most historians. Because I would think mainly because of the variety in music, in arts, in dance, in cinema, in politics, uh, you, in literature, you have a lot of these developments that affect us today. If you are seeing a Ponin Selvan movie, it has been, the novel was started in his mind at least in the 1940s. So a lot of these things have uh, a uh, not a chance, a uh, way of repeating themselves to make it interesting. So the point of Madras history is, you a local history rather is, where in school you know about the war of uh, Panipets, the dates who fought on either side. The war of uh, the battle of Adair took place just half a kilometer down this. Do we know who fought on what day? No. It was written, it was one of the armies was led by a Swiss general. It happened on Quibble Island on which we are standing. Many of us don't know that we are standing in an island, this Quibble Island surrounded by the river and the, on both sides, the, the Adair splitting into two and joining the sea. So, in uh, Ponyan Selvan, which was written in Gandhinagar, Kalki writes in Gandhinagar, he talks about Kaveri splitting as two and embracing the sea like a lover. But actually, Kaveri splits into half a dozen or even a dozen parts when it joins the sea. So, Kalki was obviously talking about this river. So, when you cross this bridge in the early morning or at dusk in the evening, you can see it almost gold lined. Many of you would have had the experience of seeing the Adair river looking like gold and the sunlight reflecting, which Kalki describes exactly in Ponin Selvan as if sheathed by gold. So, a lot of things have been happening even within less than a kilometer around this and we don't know. In fact, most of you would have some historical event happening within less than half a, half a kilometer of your house. But it is time that we sought our local history because that is what we are. Madras has contributed to us more than what we have contributed to Madras. It has made our life secure. Today, you have a uh, dozen chess champions here without having a regular chess class in like Soviet Russia. It is because the city has been uh, brought up in that way. We admitted women to medical colleges in 1860s. We allowed women to vote in 1921. Most of the world, the developed world did not do that. So every step of this, we, the last government or the previous government can't claim this. We have been on a sustained path to growth from the 1860s onwards. It has been a safe place. It has welcomed migrants with open hands. And that is why we have this Wonderful history. Thank you and good night. An inscription in near Hosur, in which the, the series of towns on ECR are being mentioned. Nilangarai Patinam, Pudu Patinam, Madarasan Patinam. So, there is a lot of controversy on the names, but I think that is uh, Madras or Chennai, the names have been there from day one. So, people say it is because of Mudrasu Chengar, Chennapa Nayak, that both the names came. Of course, Chennai Kesava Permal was started, they started building it the day after Madras was started. So that could be Chennai or Madras. I think the emotion is same. Probably, as Joey Lee said, it's a place where a lot of mad rascals are. Yeah, your friend is saying that Madras is a place where 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 Madras is a place No, no, no way, no way. The Nawabs move much later. Nawabs come into Madras, the Islamics move into Madras from Arkad much, much later. It was a fisherman's town.
so basically you don't you can imagine no how it look just like uh, you know ecr 20 30 years back how the villages were you know, just another fisherman's town i think the population would have been around something in the less than 100 or something before the british chose uh, can you tell us about the mkt sir mkt, MKT is a full talk in which i have done <laughs> is very very long subject sir but mkt of course the huge change after he was arrested uh, he was accused of the murder he came out innocent though nobody knows what really happened uh, the lakshmi kanth and murder case is such a big thing we are going a couple of talks about that both those talks are almost to us are you in this year la 1940s la vandha vandha sir ah adukku munnale irundhadu sir the first industry was started 1 km this side paris started the industry made shoes for export to usa uh pari was exporting shoes to usa made in this factory was in santo uh so factories have already been there binny was there uh, uh labor movement the labor movement was already 100 years old when we had uh, other things starting the yeah, war based uh, not during world war world war time there was no scarcity but we had a lot of uh, post war inge how did we continue that was after freedom when nehru wanted all this uh, the other day we listened to a lecture i think uh, uh, on the nda in which it was told that nehru wanted everything to be away from the borders manufacturing of course we didn't think about the intercontinental ballistic missile at that point the range of guns was much much lesser sir kabalishwara temple model saint paul's and our church marco polo visits madras in 1310 one of the first major visitors to madras marco polo and then conti comes marco polo talks about a church in the santom on the sea a nestorian church in 1310 of course Uh, some of us claim that the uh, hindu temple was there the jains claim that there was a neminatha temple there but i think let sleeping dogs lie the status quo is a very important word in history you should study history but status quo is a very very important word that uh, we should maintain of course the kapali temple uh, arnagirinatha comes and talks about a palatop we still have a palatop nearby so uh, of course the, uh, as far as i know from 1500s kapali temple has been here and the portuguese also started entering and uh, i wouldn't really say uh, there would have been parallel buildings i don't think one replaced another because the portuguese of the dutch are very very vocal when they destroy temples we don't have much of writings about that they say they destroyed the fort frederick in uh, trincomalee in uh, sri lanka and built up a church but we don't have real writings about that these are all could be assumptions did the freemasons start in chennai in india it is start here but we have even the fort st george the shape is a freemason symbol so the freemason symbols if you look at those uh, uh, those mystery writers of the recent times the american dollar has half a dozen uh, freemason symbols freemasons are very old they go up to the crusades uh, the 13th 12th centuries of course there were freemasons hidden everywhere we have freemason society for very very long uh, the original freemason was where the police headquarters was then they moved to egmore <coughs> sir about the uh, the adir cancer institute i worked there i just want to know mutalakshmi reddy of course and uh, among the many things that it she did the away home the cancer institute uh, dr shanta of course such a shanta is was one of the very few people when i wrote the history series on dtnx one of the very few living people then i wrote about and uh, cancer was then they thought why waste money on cancer a series of huts on the banks of the buckingham canal so a space was given because they were taking space out of a forest right so uh, you had the iit coming there we had the cancer institute coming there so you had to have the highest influence up there in delhi to get a territory in the adair forest so they that was the then importance they decided that it was, it was importance to be given to this because they thought that any patient who had cancer was going to die so why waste money on him that was how it was held and then uh, anadore himself dies in the cancer hospital and uh, actually uh, the shanta request them to remove Uh, another way to home the day before because she says it is the hospital has been built for uh, the poor and the angry uh, party men might do anything once uh, chief minister dies there thank you sir this is a conversation which can continue for many hours to come uh, so mr venkatesh thank you very much thanks everyone for coming to this uh, talk we will yeah. soon come up with uh, more news about the next talk thank you very much